Hey everyone, welcome. I'm going to wait a few minutes before we get started to let everyone log on. My name is Paulina. I am the culinary director here at Book Larder and I am tuning in from the shop in Seattle. Um, as you can see, it's a lovely photo of, of, of the shop. Um, we always love to know where our readers are tuning in. So if you have a chance, if you go over to the chat, um, let us know, let us know where you are based. Ballard. I know Sherelle and Jermaine are also tuning in from Seattle. So we've got a big Seattle crowd, Auburn, California. Got another one, another person from Ballard, Sammamish. Got a Seattle crowd today. Just wait another minute. No one can get going. All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, for those who missed it, again, my name is Paulina. I am the culinary director here at Book Larder. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the shop, we are a community cookbook store in the Fremont neighborhood of Seattle. Um, we've had so much fun the past year since the pandemic started, uh, being able to um, virtually host readers and authors alike from all over the world. And uh, we will continue to do so through the fall. Um, we're also going to start a uh, hand start by we're going to start hosting a handful of in person author talks and cooking classes this fall as well. So if you're interested in learning more, just head to our website, uh, subscribe to our newsletter if you aren't subscribed yet. Um, and that way you can kind of keep keep in the know with everything that's happening at the shop. Um, but today, we will be up, oh, I don't know if my background will let me. Um, we will be discussing and spotlighting this wonderful new book that came out called The Guide to Zero Proof Cocktails um, that was written by Sherelle Kloss with the help of Jermaine Whitehead, who is also going to be here uh, discussing the book with Sherelle and demoing a handful of cocktails not a handful, two cocktails from the book. Um, just a quick introduction of Sherelle. She is the founder of Dry Soda Company, which is a line of botanical inspired sparkling beverages um, that complement food in the same way a, grok, a great cocktail or wine does while making the ritual of drinking accessible to everyone. Um, she paired up with a handful of chefs and mixologists to put together this wonderful book um, that's filled with recipes, photos, flavors, and ideas um, to help you uh, create non-alcoholic drinks. Uh, she will be in discussion, like I mentioned earlier, with Jermaine Whitehead. Uh, Jermaine is a Seattle-based mixologist who has worked or managed for restaurants such as Deep Dive, Whale Winds, Bateau, Malacene, Tavern Lot, and Barrio. He teaches cook cocktail classes at, and basics at the pantry in Seattle with subjects ranging from Cocktails 101 to introductions to agave. He enjoys all spirits and cocktails, but gravitates to vermouth aperitifs, Japanese whiskey, highlands, and brandies. And we will get to see some of his teaching skills today when he demos um, two of the cocktails. Um, like I said, um, we have many copies of the book. They're all signed. I copy and pasted a link to our website where you can order it if you haven't done so yet. Um, the discussion 
will run for most of our time that we have together, but we are going to save the last 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A from the audience. So if you have any questions for Sherelle or Jermaine at any point, there is a Q&A sidebar uh, feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, please type in your questions into that sidebar instead of the chat, and I will make sure to read them out loud um, to our panelists. And if you do have any comments uh, throughout the author talk, uh, feel free to type into the chat, make sure it's set to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see. Um, and if you happen to need to leave at any point, we will be recording this, this uh, author talk and we will put it up on our YouTube channel within the next day or two so that you can always um, go back and, and watch. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Sherelle and Jermaine. Hello, thank you. Um, <clears throat> hello, so I'm Sherelle Slaus and I'm the CEO and founder of Dry Soda Company. And there's Jermaine, our lovely mixologist. Um, hello. <laughs> so good to see you, Jermaine. <laughs> it's nice um, to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. We we're having we're used to having to do stuff online with each other. So, um, so I'm also the author of the Guide to Zero Proof Cocktails, which is what we're going to talk about today. So, I'm just going to share a little bit about my story and why we wanted to create this book, and really kind of what the point of it is. And then um, I'm going to do a little Q and A with Jermaine, because he is an amazing mixologist. And my passion is flavors and mixing flavors. And so I wanna hear from Jermaine about how he creates these cocktails and some of the challenges with trying to do zero proof, because this obviously is a new and upcoming um, situation. It's zero proof is, is becoming, is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna talk about that with Jermaine. So um, let me just start a little bit with why I started the company. So I created Dry back in 2005. And I am a total foodie, so book larder is like my heaven. As a matter of fact, when I was there on Saturday doing book signing, I bought like six books. <laughs> and these are all my cookbooks here. As a matter of fact, these are a bunch of them. So total foodie. But I, for about 10 years, couldn't drink alcohol because I had four kids. I had decided to have four kids in a 10-year period. So between the pregnancies and nursing, I couldn't drink. And I felt like I was really missing out. I loved going out to fine dining establishments but there just wasn't anything for me. There was like, you know, but wine list, $10,000 of, of wines, right? That you can choose from, but there wasn't anything um, for me. And I felt uh, like that just seemed missing to me that there should be something you can have. There should be a ritual um, and something special that would really pair with your meal. So I decided to take that mission on. I had four little kids under the age of seven um, and just started messing around with flavors in my kitchen. The first flavor that I wanted to create was lavender because I was like, oh, wouldn't that just be amazing mixed with chocolate? So I started messing around my kitchen and decided that this in my head was you could really create something that would pair with food, but that we could really change the way people think about alcohol. And I am not anti-alcohol at all. As a matter of fact, I love pairing wine and food, but I also wanted that option to be able to have celebrations where alcohol doesn't necessarily need to be a part of it. And um, so that's really where Dry got its start. And we got started here in Seattle and we started with um, uh, really fine dining establishments here in Seattle. So my first restaurant was Cascadia with Carrie Steer. And we just, we kind of, we went from there. And Dry is now a, a national brand and also in Canada. But in the last couple of years, so my mission at the beginning was truly to be, have this inclusivity and have this, what we call social drinking for all. And I really thought that the zero, this zero proof lifestyle could be a really viable lifestyle, but <clears throat> the world wasn't quite ready for all of that yet. But over the last couple of years, there's been this huge um, shift for people where they are looking at alcohol, not necessarily taking it completely out, but maybe questioning the relationship a little bit. I think especially through the pandemic, a lot of us did that. Um, and we're looking to modify. And I think in that modification, or if you wanna take it out altogether, there needs to be really cool drinks, complicated or not complicated, complex drinks. Um, there needs to be ritual involved. And so we decided um, to, to look at potentially 
uh, creating this guide. And so we started talking to Jermaine. We had we were working with Jermaine before this that we came out uh, with the book, and we were so impressed with what he had to offer and his take on flavors that we really wanted to push ourselves. And so we started working with some other mixologists here in Seattle. We started to put together um, some recipes and, and to really teach people, because if you think about it, it's like, it's kind of for us, we think of this as the next evolution of cocktails, right? Like you've had, you have a history of all these cocktails that are, have alcohol as a base, but now let's, you can push it and you can push the envelope a little bit. So I'm excited to talk to Jermaine about how he thinks about that. The way that we, um, wanted to put together the book for me in particular, I was super passionate about this concept of, um, I like, to, I, I like recipes, but I love being able to create things myself. So the book, the way that we put it together is we have, the beginning of the book really talks about the different flavors, how you balance them, how they're complementary, how you can enhance flavors. So I love that piece. So you can start to build, to have the building blocks of yourself to be able to put together recipes. We also talk about tools that are important to have, stocking a bar cart, um, just some different terms. And then obviously we have a bunch of beautiful recipes as well and beautiful photography in the book. Um, but my goal really was to get people inspired to create their own, which is why I really wanted Jermaine here for this because he has created some incredible recipes and I want to get from him really how he thinks about this because he's really the expert. I did create dry, but he is the expert on these, um, on putting together these cocktails. So that's, that's really the whole concept with, with this is to be able to bring together, um, teach you how to make your own, but also give you some great ideas. And then my mission is to think about like when we have people that are um, coming to our home and we're having events that we're thinking about everybody and that we really should be able to offer people zero proof concepts, whether they are have given up alcohol altogether or whether they've had one drink and they would really just like to be able to continue to party, but not necessarily continue to have the alcohol. So that's the guide to zero proof cocktails. I'm super excited. I hope people will will look at it, read it, get some get some excitement, and um, that you can share with your family and friends some zero proof cocktails. So, um, Jermaine, we're gonna jump to you now. So, uh -huh. will you do a little introduction of yourself and and kind of how you came to getting involved with zero proof and the challenges that you see? Not a problem. Thank you so much for the introduction and also being a part of such an awesome project. Um, with my background, uh, as was mentioned a little bit earlier, I've uh, worked at a lot of high-end uh, establishments. I've got about 16 years of uh, experience in hospitality, and um, I just love all aspects of it, from the dining experience to just uh, the service. Everything is just gorgeous, and uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm a foodie, but I like to eat, because <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do is to go out and enjoy food, as well as uh, the experience of sharing with friends and family. Uh, but how I came into this project here is because I love the concept of uh, alcohol-free, zero-proof cocktails. Uh, just uh, like was mentioned earlier, uh, you want to continue having a good time, but sometimes you just don't want to have the alcohol included. And I think that uh, people sort of like lose the idea of like, well, if I'm going to have an alcohol-free cocktail, it's going to be uh, lemonade or something in that nature. And those are, you know, exactly. those are standards. You can have those anywhere and they're still <laughs> delicious, but you can really dress it up and also still be just as creative. And so uh, being a part of this project really helped sort of uh, push me to sort of like see cocktails in a different light. And again, try to uh, appreciate how people would still want to have something that's going to be curated, even though it doesn't have alcohol free. In fact, how I see it now, alcohol, though something I still enjoy, I see it as a crush when you're trying to think about a cocktail itself and its creation, because the easiest way for you to sort of uh, get by is just, well, at, at least there's alcohol in it, or it's, um, <laughs> oh, it's strong. Uh, I, I intended for it to be strong if the flavors don't match. Here, you can't really hide behind that because now you have to make mm. sure that everything is balanced and also is uh, paired well. So like, this is where you really start to showcase your sort of creative aspect is also cooking uh, talent because you're like, all right, cool, I understand flavors. And now I just get to put them together. It's super fun. Yeah, it seems like when I've been talking with other mixologists that they're really getting behind the challenge of this, right? Like it actually is taking their game to the next level. And I think as well for the, the home mixologist that you, this is an opportunity to re, and you, to bring in new flavors, but to, like it's a challenge. There's a little bit of an extra challenge to it. So 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. Like what you're seeing now on menus, like just think in the past three years, not even going mm -hmm. back that far, you're seeing options of zero free, uh, zero proof cocktails on the menu. In fact, an entire list, instead of just having one option, you could see five or six. When I was uh, the director at Deep Dive, I made sure to have an entire menu specifically focused on zero proof cocktails because I wanted to make sure that if you didn't want to imbibe on something, you had an, uh, at least more than just one option just instead of just juice. And yeah, like you said, bartenders are seeing this as kind of a challenge because now they want to make sure they're getting everybody uh, a feature versus just focusing on the people who are having alcohol. So I love yeah. seeing this. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's when I started, like I would go into restaurants, I think I told you this and the sommeliers were like, eh, I don't really want to talk to a soda salesperson. And I was like, <laughs> no, the whole point is that your job is to pair beverages and food and you're that you're missing out on a whole group of customers that you know may mm -hmm. not be able to drink or don't want to drink and and I'm like just taste this because we created it to pair with different kinds of foods we had those original four flavors and it was and that light bulb went off and it was interesting chefs got it right away um mm -hmm. and it's I used to go in and do weight staff training here in Seattle and I was you know because I it was poured into a champagne flute because I wanted the ritual for everyone but it was like I begged and begged them to put to have a special section in their menus and only a few restaurants did it. And so when I see that now, it is like, it's so exciting because it's like, for me, I know that like, I think I've told you this, my mission and my goal in life is in the next 10 years, I want to walk into a bar and have an order, you know, tell, a, tell the bartender I want a cocktail and he'll ask with or without alcohol. Like, I really think it'll become that mainstream. Will you talk about a little bit about the challenges though Kind of the specific flavor challenges you have when you're not going to use alcohol like what are how do you think about building a cocktail when you're not going to use alcohol great question you know when mm -hmm. i'm approaching any cocktail i kind of approach it in the same sort of idea of like what story i'm trying to create and so that's what kind of made it a little easier for me um it's like all right if i'm going to be making a cocktail what's the season i'm trying to go for is it summer spring i okay. kind of approach it like it's going to be uh, almost like a dinner so i can create a balance so i don't That's try cool. to think of yeah it's actually the easiest way to make a cocktail think about how you make a balanced meal and then just think about the parents because if you oh, yeah. understand the history of the like the, of the, the flavor components in your spirit mm -hmm. then you can find and match all those flavors from any ingredient around you like for example bourbon has strong vanilla flavor profiles that has in, in, in some specific bottles could have some cherry notes, some apple notes, but a caramel, you really get those baking spices. So then you just mm -hmm. kind of find those flavors in your pantry to recreate them. And that makes it a lot easier because then if you want to make a, um, a flavored water, or if you want to make a flavored mm -hmm. syrup, you can then just add those spices to sort of, uh, I hate to say mimic, but emulate those flavor profiles that you might find out of a, out of a spirit. So okay. that's how I approach it. I, I know some people are like, wait, 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 wait. So you're cooking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not cooking, but I think of it as a way so I can find that balance. Because one of the biggest resources for someone who wants to start getting into the world of making cocktails is actually mm -hmm. the flavor, the Bible, the flavor Bible. Right. Because then you get to understand all the flavor components and then how you can match things. All right. So now tell us, will you... Okay, so we know that's kind of how you create recipes, then how do you like someone was just asking, like, how do you think about like few ingredients? Like, are there ways to make these pretty complex and wonderful without a ton of ingredients? Like, how do you think about it from that standpoint with fewer ingredients? Well, if you have fewer mm -hmm. ingredients, then you got to think about what those ingredients taste like, because you really want to make sure that if you only have like three or four that you're also mm -hmm. showcasing the flavor profiles of those three or four ingredients. You don't need to have 15, 20, 50 ingredients to make a great cocktail. If you start adding more ingredients, then everything mm -hmm. sort of gets a little bit lost. And so I think simplifying is the most appropriate way. And so when you think about, uh, for example, like what goes with something like, okay, I like spices. And so how mm -hmm. do you make sure to get that spice balance? So if right. I had a fresh uh, pepper into a, any sort of cocktail, then I need to have some sort of balancer. So I think citrus naturally. And then if okay. I think citrus, I start thinking about cocktails or drinks that I like in the past. Like, oh, I like mm -hmm. lemonades. You know, I like lime juice. I like margaritas. And then you can start mm -hmm. basing your drink off of that. Lime goes super well with spices. It helps control that heat. So it doesn't really burn your mouth. 
and then mm -hmm. you can start building from there. If you got a lot of about a, a lot of acidic flavor profiles, mm -hmm. then you need a little bit of sugar to balance out that acid. And that's where you right. start adding your simple syrups. If you want to be creative and add a flavored simple syrup, like maybe a mm -hmm. chipotle or something like that, you can do that. But I always like just doing something simple and just using uh, a nice refined sugar. Right. And then after that, you can start uh, deciding how you want to take the drink afterwards. Do I want it to be right. effervescent? Do I need bubbles? Do I want it to be uh, a little cleaner? All mm -hmm. of these things kind of happen as you're building as you go. But like I said, you don't need to have a bunch of ingredients. You just need to have right. make sure all those ingredients sort of pair together. Right. So I think that's what's great about the book is we talk about, first off, the way that the chapters are set up with recipes is we go sweet, spicy, bitter, sour, and savory. So you, you can look at them from that direction, but also just that the way that we talk about how you can do the complementing uh, flavors. Because I know when I started out creating some, like I want to start a little bit more simple and then and sort of practice some of those those tech, those flavor combinations, right? With just a few ingredients. And so obviously, because I have access to a lot of dry, <laughs> um, I do a lot of, I, I, I kind of everything starts with dry for me and then I add different stuff. Um, but one of the great things in um, that I've also found that I love about the book is that you can sort of think about different cocktails that you actually like, like I like a Manhattan. And so what are something that you can, that's a little similar to that, um, that you can think about that you can make for yourself? Um, well, do you want to jump into demoing um, your first recipe? And then I can just ask a little few more questions after that as well. So, because I know I love when you demo, because I feel like we've, um, he's demoed for our team and then just my, working with him on some other stuff. I've learned a ton. So I will be quiet and let you demo the, the, the first drink. No problem. Well, the first one I'm doing is straight out of our book. It's going to be uh, the zero proof uh, blushing bees knees. Now, mm. the reason why I chose this one is because, man, it is nice outside. I want something that's going to be refreshing. I also want something that's going to have nice flavor profiles. So this one is going to be having uh, honey, it's going to be having lemon citrus, as well as raspberries. Raspberries are my favorite thing. My son loves them. And so I have them all over the house. We have them in the garden. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're gone in the garden. We ate all those. So I had to buy <laughs> these from the store. But the way that I, I chose this is because, again, the season, seasonality of the, uh, of the cocktail, as well as <clears throat> what do I have available? A lot of the times when mm -hmm. I'm thinking about beverages, it's like, what do I have in my house where I can make something tasty? And like you cool. said, where you'd like to base it off of uh, zero proof first, that is an mm -hmm. excellent way to start if that's what you want to have your feature. And what the greatest thing about um, dry soda, there's so many great flavor profiles you want to use. A must-have in every fridge, I feel, is cucumber and the Fuji apple. They go with everything. <laughs> Trust me when I say well, this. Oh, thank it. you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the fridge. They're easy I to have. I'm sorry I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> no, you didn't. But I, I'm telling you right now, cucumber is delicious. It's so good. It is. It is very good. Very refreshing, too. So I'm going to take some raspberries as much as you like. It doesn't matter. Raspberries are delicious. It's just going to add great flavor profile. But I'm going to do three because I want to save a few for a garnish. Then take a muddler. If you have a muddler, that's awesome. If not, you can also use your spoon, but you want to macerate all of that raspberry right there. Get all, release all those flavors. And so it also will spread throughout the entire cocktail. Plus you're going to get that gorgeous red color. Yeah. Sure not to make a mess in your own house, Jermaine. I get to clean it afterwards. <laughs> Now, what I'm going to do now, I always like to sort of build with my smallest ingredient going to the largest ingredient, just in case I make any mistakes. Oh. So with that being said, yeah, I make mistakes. I it's true. about that. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but if you add with the biggest ingredient first, you're just going to, and you make a mistake by grabbing, I don't know, like uh, the wrong sugar, then you're going to have mm -hmm. to throw the entire thing away. And I hate wasting. Yep. So let's get some citrus. Fresh citrus is the best. Always get fresh, especially if you're not working with alcohol. You want to make sure that mm -hmm. all the ingredients are going to be extra fresh, extra tasty. Rinse them off. Make sure they're nice and clean. You don't want anything to come uh, to add any flavors you don't want to your cocktail. Now, if you have a juice press, awesome. Super great. Love using them because they're make sure to get all that citrus out. But if you don't have a press, you can just use your bare hand. A lot of times I'm just using my bare hand anyways. It's the fastest, 
But I thought in this setting, I'd bust out all my tools. <laughs> this is I some have of one my of those tools. that I use all the time. <laughs> good, good, good. They're great to use and they're fun. They are. They're stronger than my hand. Now I've got a jigger. I use this just to measure, just to make sure if I need to make any adjustments, I then know how much I added so then I can make the adjustment. So in this case, I'm gonna start off with a half ounce. One of the greatest things about making cocktails for so many years, you understand sort of the basics and like how to make a simple sour, a simple martini and things like that. So all sours kind of have like the similar recipe. So if you're gonna be doing this without alcohol, what I like to do is still do like a half ounce of citrus, then a half ounce of my sugar component, I add a little bit of water just so I can get it moving uh, mm. as I shake it. Uh, some people don't do this. I do because I feel like the citrus is very acidic uh, mm. and the sugar component, I want to bind them together. So I add a little bit of water just so when I shake it, then things can start to bind together. That so, is a trade secret. I love that. That's a new one. Don't tell me. Oh, Mike, how many people did you know? <laughs> you didn't hear that part, everyone. Forget it. <laughs> Delete it from your brain. So in this case, I'm gonna be using some honey syrup. Honey syrup is something that's gonna add some great flavor to this cocktail, as well as a nice compliment to the raspberry. Reasons why I know this, first off, I've had raspberries a ton of times with honey, plus it's really good with yogurt. And so when I think about pairings, I'm like, what do I like to eat with this? And then that's what oh. I do to make my beverage. In fact, I've had this cocktail before with a teaspoon of yogurt. I called it my breakfast cocktail. So good, because that just a little oh, wow. touch more of that acid. Oh yeah, oh. that's uh, that's why that's I'm like saying I, it. Hmm? I love that because I've made bees knees a ton, and I had not thought to add yogurt. I'm learning so much already. Oh, yogurt was uh, definitely a fun ingredient to add. Um, uh, you would see it in a lot of menus about three or four years ago, and I still think it's super cool, especially for breakfast. In fact, <laughs> I won't do it on this one, but I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> so for here, I added a half ounce of honey because I want to make sure these raspberries are already tasting them. They're super tart. So I added a little bit more of the um, honey just to get that balance. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of that water. I'm going to do an ounce of water. Perfection. Okay. So now that I have this balanced here, I'm just going to get a little taste just to make sure everything's going the way I want. Already know that's delicious. That's really good. I'm very happy. Then I'm gonna add some ice. Now, the greatest thing about not using alcohol in cocktails, you don't have to dilute for so long. Another reason why I added water because I'm not gonna shake it for a long period of time. Mm, okay. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a shake because I don't wanna water down too much the ingredients. I just want to get some aeration in the cocktail. Give it another taste. Oh man, those raspberries are so good. <laughs> Not as good as from the garden. Trust me when I say that, but still <laughs> really good. <laughs> Now I'm going to make the beverage. I've tasted the cocktail, it tastes really good. Now there's one thing that I like to do when I'm doing my cocktails. I like to use a fine mesh strainer in unison. That way I can oh. get the chunks of the raspberries out. I just don't like it in my teeth. Oh, that's actually, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that, that might just be me. Well, that's an extra step I don't normally take. I love it. You don't I even have that's... to, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things, too, that I think um, is important about doing the zero proof uh, cocktails, and even if you just want something super simple, like just a, a dry with a, a garnish, is the barware that you use. So we talked a lot about that in the book, too. So you can see he's using a beautiful coupe glass here. And I have really upped my barware game because it helps me like just, you know, in the evenings when I want something special. So I love that you're using the beautiful coupe glass with this one. Thank you. Thank you. I'm also using uh, one of my favorite glasses in our next cocktail. It's the, the dry soda feature one you uh, sent to me. Oh, yeah. Uh, Isn't that one so great? Good. Yeah, I love that one. It's my favorite glass. I had to hide it from my partner because she <laughs> wanted to use it all the time. I'm like, don't break this. Do not break this. <laughs> so next I'm going to do is add some vanilla uh, dry soda. One great thing okay. about this cocktail 
Uh, it actually works with a few sodas. I've have had it with the cucumber because it's delicious. I've tried it with the yeah. Fuji apple. It's also delicious. However, with the vanilla, it really brings out a more of a balanced flavor profile that works really nicely with the, um, the raspberries. Like when I remember, remember what I said about that yogurt, if you use a honey vanilla mm -hmm. uh, yogurt, yeah. it's so tasty with it. I imagined it with this right here and it, it just works so well. Perfect. Also what I am drinking, but out of a can. <laughs> <laughs> the can's my favorite. They don't, I, yeah, I, I the couldn't find it at my local store. I was like, the can's the oh, best. <laughs> yeah, cans are good. Now I'm gonna garnish this up like I would any cocktail. I wanna make sure I have my raspberries. I like to feature what's in the cocktail as well as having some pops of citrus to help balance out not only the nose, but also the cocktail. So the first thing I want you to smell is actually that citrus pop. So I'm gonna take the peel, I'm gonna squeeze it right on top of the cocktail, get all mm. those essential oils right on top. Yep. Rub it all around. And you kind of have a choice of what you want to do with the peel. You could drop it in, um, which is nice and easy. But I like to add a little bit of uh, fun to it because uh, I don't like to actually have the peel in the, the cocktail because I want to consume it rather quickly. So I'm like, I'll put it on the side. So I put a little slit right there oh, in the middle. Yep. yep. Rest it right on the lip. Oh, your garnishes are beautiful. That's a good one. And then you have our featured cocktail. Love it. The bee's knees. <laughs> I think a better version of the bee's knees. It has a lot more complexity. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, before we move on to the next one, I want to ask a quick question about if, what do you think is are kind of the important basic tools someone should have in their bar? Great question. Uh, I think the, the most important thing is, is having a, a Boston shaker. I like okay. the 10 on 10 version because I can't break it. I've broken a mm -hmm. lot of my tools. You cannot break these. I've only seen one <laughs> person break them. I was like, "How? you're amazing. How do you do this? How do you do that? <laughs> uh, but I think, definitely think that's part one. Mm -hmm. um, part two, um, also like having a mixing glass, which is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Again, I chose the 10 because I can't break this. Uh, there are mm -hmm. glass versions, which are nice, uh, but I have a toddler running around who also likes to play with my bar tools. So I, again, try to go with the tools <laughs> that are impossible to break. And then uh, I like to have a spoon. Uh, you can buy a, ba a basic Boston shaker kit, a uh, cocktail kit that'll have mm -hmm. a spoon included, as well as a glass version of a Boston shaker and a tin. Mm -hmm. Uh, included, but I really mm -hmm. uh, encourage you to invest a little bit of money in your spoon because um, mm -hmm. it won't bend, it won't flex when you're trying to uh, use it. This one is, mm -hmm. um, I think I spent like 20 bucks for this one right here, and uh, mm -hmm. I have never broken this. Uh, and then a jigger. A jigger okay. is also really important because I like to measure everything just to make sure that I have consistency with all of my beverages. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think those are probably the most important thing. Like it's nice to have a vegetable peeler, but it's not the mm -hmm. most necessary thing because you can still just use a knife. Mm -hmm. um, high quality knife is nice. Um, like I mentioned before, you don't necessarily have to have uh, a juicer. You can use your bare hand and you don't necessarily need to have a muddler or a fine mesh strainer. But they are nice things to include when you start to sort of um, elevate your bar. The basics okay. I still think are having a mixing glass, a Boston shaker, and a jigger and a spoon. With those, you can do everything. Oh, whoops, okay. forgot a Hawthorne strainer. Ugh. Also yeah, do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one version uh, specifically is uh, an antique version. Um, it has holes on the tops, uh, kind of looks uh, close to a julep strainer, but it has springs okay. on here. Uh, okay. This version is not the most necessary, but it's mm -hmm. definitely the one that's most comfortable in my hand. Yeah. Um, and we also, in the book, there's, um, we talk a lot about the different tools too, and kind of the must-haves and nice-to-haves. Um, there's some questions about this particular recipe, so I wanted to get to those. Um, so you use the phrase honey syrup. Is it just mm -hmm. honey or is it a honey syrup? Like, what's the difference? Excellent question. Now, uh, straight honey is uh, very, very uh, viscous and has a, a little bit more intensity of its flavor profile. 
And so okay. when you're making a syrup, I'm adding a little bit of water to help uh, dilute a little bit. Okay. That way it won't be as intense. And also I can, um, I guess, move it around a little, a little easier. Like when you have like raw honey, it's hard to get a perfect measurement because it's sticking yeah. everywhere. With the yeah. honey syrup, when you add a little bit of water, then it's easier to create measurements as well as it doesn't control the flavor of the cocktail. So you're just adding enough water to kind of get it mixing and making it so it's easy to use. Yeah. So what I did for this is I um, took some uh, honey, uh, high grade honey, added it into a pan and I did mm -hmm. a, a ratio of uh, three to one, three being honey okay. and then one being the water. And then okay. I just uh, boiled it to help um, mix it together. And then, okay. yeah, it turned out perfectly. This, I do sort of the same thing if I'm using a high grade agave uh, okay. uh, flavor profile. I do the same thing. That way I can, again, get those perfect measurements and it's not going to be as intense of a flavor profile. Great. Now, is there one kind of honey that you think is better than others like clover versus blackberry or what, what, what's your honey suggestion? <clears throat> clover. Clover is perfect. I love it so okay. much because uh, it, it goes with a lot of things. But when you're going down the road of like specifics and what flavors you want to highlight, choosing the correct sugar profile is also something that is going to be important for your beverages. Like for example, okay. if you're trying to emulate a sort of a rum style cocktail, using mm -hmm. a muscovado sugar component will definitely give you those flavor profiles that sort of okay. complement rum. So choosing the correct uh, sugar also can be uh, exciting for your alcohol-free cocktails. And it's super fun to have a collection of sugars, unless you don't have a lot of cabinet space. <laughs> there you go, excellent. <laughs> Okay. Um, and the last question is actually for me. Um, so dry is not all the recipes have dry in them. And if you cannot find dry, you can also use club sodas um, and different syrups, but dry is available um, both on Amazon and on drinkdry.com. You can get all of the flavors, but uh, we're nationwide. And if you go onto our web, our website, drinkdry.com and put in your uh, zip code, you'll be able to find where dry is near you and which, which flavors, but um, we created the book because we wanted people to be able to make recipes, whether with dry or without. Um, but yes, you can find drinkdry.com. You can buy it there or also find out which stores and also Amazon. So let's move on to your next recipe. Of course. Uh, so this one right here is actually not in the book. I wanted to give you an idea of how easy it is to just sort of <clears throat> make a cocktail with the things that are in your house without having to add um, that much thought to it. And so just like before, as I mentioned, I thought about the season and the weather and what it is mm -hmm. I wanna have. It is nice out where I'm at. And so I love margaritas and I wanted to have a margarita, but I wanted to elevate it slightly by adding just a little okay. bit of spice as well as that flavor profile mm -hmm. of cucumber. Cucumber, Ooh, I think I'm is- excited. Right? <laughs> Isn't it, doesn't it sound really good? <laughs> spicy I drink all the and spicy refreshing ones. flavors of cucumber. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Then this oh, this definitely is something I think you'll like because when you're using a fresh um, jalapeno, you get that uh, savory flavor profile of the pepper itself, that earthiness, mm -hmm. that spiciness, a little sweetness, and then on top of that, you can control how much uh, spice you want to have because you can add the seeds in there, you can add multiple slices. I'm gonna be a little bit conservative because I don't want to show my choking face when I have too much spice <laughs> in my cocktail. <laughs> It's, it's not the worst face, but it sure is the funniest. <laughs> well, when so we, I'm gonna... um, back in when dry many years ago, we did a seasonal flavor. We did a Serrano pepper and it was so good. And the flavor of it would oh, so the different, it would be different spice levels for each bottle that you open because of the way peppers are. And, but you did not want to take a big whiff of it. So, cause it would like really knock you. Well, you remember when we were, uh, Jermaine helped us with some bitters and sodas that we, we've just launched as well. And Jermaine was helping us with that. And we had a few that were, we'd smell them and the spice would just get you and you'd be choking. And <laughs> it was so crazy. <laughs> that, that was, was so crazy because like the spice flavor was perfect. When you smell it, you're like, I'm crying. Whoa. My nose, everything hurts. What's in here? It was, it was uh, an exciting quarter. I really enjoyed it was, that. It was fun. <laughs> Also, the flavors that came out afterwards were so good. Yeah, we're pretty excited about all that. So anyway, back to your spicy jalapenos. Okay. Well, yeah, so just like you're saying, chopped up a few. I actually put in uh, three to four, so maybe a little bit more, so you might see my face. It's okay. 
I just really like the way that it smells. I already, I already know that I'm enjoying the, the flavors of this. And just like I did with the other one, with those raspberries, I'm going to macerate these slices of jalapeno. I want to release those aromatics. I want to get all those oils out. Like you, when you use a muddler stick to uh, smash any ingredients, you really start to smell the flavors. And it's just amazing because that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So I've got my slices. Then I'm going to get some lime juice. Because as I mentioned before, I had the idea of having something like a, a margarita style. Because I just sounds so good right now. After work, it's nice outside. You work in the yard. Why not have a margarita? But nothing is too crazy because, you know, you got to make dinner or pick up the toddler. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to get some fresh the zero lime juice. Proof. <laughs> it really, honestly, like that's. During the weekday, it's my favorite thing just to have alcohol-free beverages, whether it be just uh, soda water or if it's going to be a, uh, something sparkling or make a cocktail or even mm -hmm. having like NA beers. It's just the market has changed so drastically yeah. in such a small period of time. It's so it's, easy to just like, I'll have something tasty without having to yep. put any effort into it. Exactly. I, that is I love what, it. We're, what I'm all excited about. <laughs> it's really, really nice. And I, 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 I'm seeing a lot more uh, popularity when it comes to just uh, controlling what you consume and it's not yeah. like a bad stigma. And I, I'm, that's right. my most exciting thing about all of this. Exactly, you're getting incredible flavors and you actually feel like you're getting mixologists at the top of their game when you're asking. I, my favorite thing to do is go into a restaurant and say, I'm not drinking, create something for me. Tell me, show me what you can do. <laughs> exactly. I mean, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's <laughs> tough. I'm like, I don't have anything. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to add my fresh lime juice. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on my lime because I know that I got some spice in there. So I'm going to do about okay. three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Then, as I mentioned, I'm going to do a margarita style. So I want to bring out flavor profiles that are similar to uh, tequila. Tequila is an agave-based um, spirit. And so mm -hmm. that agave flavor profile is what I'm trying to put in the background. So that's why I'm using agave oh, okay. syrup. Oh, right. To okay. sort of bring in right. that flavor profile of agave you might get from tequila. And seeing how there's spices involved with this, I don't need to add anything in addition. So it's a very simple cocktail idea without mm -hmm. that much effort, but I'm definitely going to get a cool concept here. So I'm going to so add you did, ad you, did, you did the agave syrup, right? So three parts mm -hmm. agave, one part water. Okay, great. That's correct. Because I, I went for a nice dark agave, but if you're uh, buying um, the lighter version of agave, I don't really think you need to add water to it because it's already softened enough. But okay. I, like, I like intense flavor profiles when it comes to my syrups. Right. That's just me, my preference. <laughs> uh, I'm going to then add a little bit of water just so I can get things moving. About three quarters. I like to sometimes match the citrus and the water uh, uh, measurements. So I did three quarters of water with three quarters of ounce of citrus. Great. And then I'm now I'm going to add a little bit of salt to my finishing glass. Because like I said, I want to make it uh, like a margarita. And so... Here, I'm going to add some citrus on the outside of the glass. I'm going to roll it in some salt. This here, adding the citrus on the outside of the glass, is going to make sure that it sticks. There we go. Shake off any excess. Right. I love a salt rim. So good. I, it creates that umami note for your cocktail. It's been fun to add spices to it too, or different like fresh lavender or like, it's fun to kind of, I mean, some things don't work out mind you that I've tried, but like I, it's one of my favorite things to do is to have a either salted or sugared rim. I just, I love the texture and the interesting flavor you get. Lavender was a great idea. I actually almost grabbed some lavender, uh, fresh lavender outside to go with the aromatics, but I went with mint instead. Cause I was like, well, I don't okay. want to, I don't want to go too crazy. I'm going to add one big cube in there because like my last cocktail i'm also going to double strain this through a fine mesh strainer just in case i don't want to have any uh loose oh, yeah. floating around to get in the back of your throat and really ruin the experience <laughs> all right all right 
That is really, really tasty. Exactly what I want to have oh. in today. Fine, my friend. I'm, get... hmm? I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this as soon as we're done here. You really should. I'm already like, excited I about it. Have a <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really tasty. I'm uh, happy how this idea came through so quickly. And then using my cucumber, okay. I'm going to add some cucumber dry soda to it, as much or as little as you like. It doesn't have to be something uh, super big. Give it a quick stir. And then I'm going to garnish it. I got some uh, flowers and some mint from outside Lovely. in the garden. I'm going to take this here, hit it on the glass, because I want to, like, the cucumber has a nice fresh flavor profile to it. Mm -hmm. And the uh, mint has a nice cooling aspect to it. So it kind of goes nicely with the heat from the uh, jalapeno. Oh, yeah. To not make it too intense because you've got that cool aromatic. What I did was I actually hit the glass with mint because I want mm -hmm. all those oils to fall on top of the glass so I can smell the mint as I go and I can taste it on the glass okay, instead of great. just smashing yeah. it on my hand and it's all on my hand. I want it here. <laughs> yep. And then just for uh, aesthetic reasons, uh, I'm going to put some flowers in there because it looks Lovely. really pretty. I feel like that this is orange. an excellent drink for a picnic. I mean, a, like a dinner party on the deck. This just like right my, up my alley here. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Super, super fun. And a jalapeno slice just to, uh, again, let you know that there's heat involved with this cocktail. So you've got a nice sort of uh, aesthetic. I put salt on half of the glass just in case I wanted to have a break from the salt. Mm -hmm. um, and also salt and cucumber go really, really well together. Excellent. Love it. <clears throat> yeah, that's tasty. I knew okay, it was going to be good. Definitely going <laughs> to make that one. <laughs> I knew. It. In fact, I would even add a few more uh, spice, uh, slices of jalapeno just to get more of that heat. But it, okay. you get the vegetal notes of the jalapeno. That smell of the mint is really, really nice because it offsets that um, uh, spicy flavor profile that you're smelling. And the cucumber, mm -hmm. again, that freshness, the savory aspect, and everything just works so well together that I am going to drink all of this at the end of this show. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, well, it's, we're at like 5.50 now, so I wanted to um, find out if you would want to ask if anyone has any questions. And I'd also love to know how people... Um, how they're bringing zero proof into their into their houses and um, into their parties. So, any questions for Jermaine or I? I don't think there's any more questions. It's, I'm not getting any more in the Q and A. So, um, well, maybe we could finish up with. I would love from you, Jermaine, your sort of top tips for us to take away um for making our own like as you're thinking i mean even just making a cocktail so your top tips there top tips honestly is uh they're they're always the simpler ones meaning don't okay. take it too seriously don't overthink it like literally okay. just think about what you like and that's how you're going to build your cocktail like okay. as we both sort of agree to if you really like dry soda then mm -hmm. just start thinking about the flavors that you're going to be using in that dry soda and then mm -hmm. build your cocktail off of that after that whatever the season's screaming for you. If you want something that's going to be moody, you want something that's going to be refreshing because it's hot outside, then make your favorite style of cocktail in that fashion. If you take it too seriously, then you're just going to be mm -hmm. sort of grasping at straws, throwing stuff right. in there, and you don't know uh, how it's going to turn out because you're not really thinking about it uh, in a more sort of complete fashion. So simplify. And then just yes. whatever you have around the house to make it. If you want to go to the store and make something super exciting, Super mm -hmm. awesome. Always encourage that. But if you only have like, you know, I only have lemon juice and I've got lavender and I had mm -hmm. lavender soda and I've got sugar. Well, that's going to be mm -hmm. really tasty because the lavender soda is, uh, as a lemonade, it's super good. And you just made something mm -hmm. complex without trying. And then if you just want to add a, like a sort of interesting garnish, whether if you want to like, I'm not saying you have to do this, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you like have some star anise and you roast the star anise and put it right on top, now you're going to have like an anise flavor profile mixed with a lavender and some lemonade. You're like, wow, I didn't do, I did three things and I made a really mm -hmm. uh, complex beverage without doing much. 
So those okay. little things go a, right. a long way. Or roasting some cinnamon, putting it on top as something you can smell as you're enjoying a simple cocktail like a lemonade goes mm -hmm. a long way. You brought, inspired my team. We did a, I had my whole team out here and we did a little Top Chef style zero proof cocktail contest. And one of them picked up on the, uh, where you smoke the uh, cinnamon stick. So. <laughs> <laughs> they did that in there. Um, so we have a question about shrubs and I know we do have, we talked about shrubs in the book as well, but what are your take on shrubs? Uh, I love shrubs. I think shrubs mm -hmm. are so much fun. It's a great way to use any sort of produce and not have it go to waste. Mm -hmm. um, yep. There's two ways where you can do shrubs. You can do it with a fast way or slow way. Slow way is like, uh, I'm going to use the example of using strawberries or raspberries, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, equal parts sugar with uh, your produce. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you just let it sit and let all the juices and the sugars sort of combine together, making its own sort of sugar, uh, sugar uh, water, strawberry water. Mm -hmm. um, that's the slow way. And it really intensifies the flavor of the strawberry. Sometimes it, I mean, with strawberry, it doesn't take that long at all. Uh, you can mm -hmm. literally just let it sit overnight. Mm -hmm. And then you add your vinegar. Uh, the vinegar okay. I like to use is uh, champagne vinegar. Um, and I like okay. to start off small. Like if I'm doing equal parts uh, produce with sugar, I'll do mm -hmm. like, um, let's see, one cup sugar, one cup produce. I'll do a half a cup of the vinegar and then build up to see how much of that intense flavor profile of vinegar I want. Um, so mm -hmm. I like a softer version of the vinegar. I like champagne vinegar to use, uh, okay. but apple vinegar works, um, white vinegar works, but champagne, I feel the acidity is a little bit softer. And it works well in the shrub to highlight the flavor profiles uh, of the produce. And so when okay. I'm mixing with it, there's it gives you a lot more um, freedom to just simplify. So you're like, oh, sweet. I've got this awesome strawberry shrub that already has a little bit of a tartness and it's got the sugar component. Mm -hmm. I'll just top it off with my favorite soda. The, the dry vanilla soda works really well on that. Um, I've done it. It's really good. Uh, mm -hmm. I've also done it with the lavender one. Tastes really good. And so you can just be that simple and have an elevated cocktail. But if you want to incorporate it in another beverage for like um, shaking purposes, then you have mm -hmm. to start doing the balancing, the ratio to make sure you're not having too much of the shrub and having added other flavor profiles because that shrub right. can be intense and you don't want to yeah, take away sure. from that. Mm -hmm. You want that to be like, well, that's the, uh, the flavor profile I want to highlight and build around it. Okay. But yeah, shrubs think... are great. Yeah, shrubs are great. And I actually think they're a lot of fun to make and they're pretty easy. And um, like you said, it's like when you have that leftover produce, um, Element Shrub Company, that's actually how he got started is they were going around picking all their neighbors fruit and they had too much. <laughs> the Element Shrubs are actually really good as well. They're out of the East Coast, but um, I, I love that story. But I'm like, it's 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 been a great thing. I think it's really fun kind of in the, and it's an easy one too. Like sometimes I'll just add a little shrub to, like the vanilla dry, for instance, or even the Fuji apple. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's such an easy, like complex drink that you have in zero pro cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, one other question we have is around stirring. So when you're putting a uh, soda into a drink, a dry, let's say, um, and are you stirring it? Are you thinking they're concerned about getting the bubbles out by stirring too much? Do you have a suggestion on, on that? You know, you definitely don't want to stick the soda in it and then shake. <laughs> Yeah, I learned that do not way. shake the Back soda, the you will explode that, <laughs> it'll get on you. It's very funny when it happens, you're like, oh yeah. Um, Back in the early great days. Great question. Um, when it comes to the, the soda and you're wanting to mix the cocktail and not disturb the uh, carbonation, the bubbles, um, there's one way you, where you can do it. You can have the soda water at the bottom first and then put your cocktail in. That's one way. Uh, how I like to do it is I put the cocktail in first, and then I add my soda. I take my spoon, put it at the very bottom of the, of the, of the glass. And then mm -hmm. as I'm pulling it out, I'm lightly, lightly spinning the spoon just oh, so okay. I can sort of mix the cocktail. This is something that I learned by doing um, Japanese highball cocktails. The most important thing about a whiskey highball is to not disturb the carbonation of the water. And so to delicately do that, just lightly move the spoon. There's another way that people do it by having a, a spoon with indentations on it to pour the carbonation yep. down the spoon and, ha and have a sort of a, a layer effect because mm -hmm. when it's at the bottom, you can start, the soda water will then 
go down to the bottom of a spoon and then build up. That is also another method. But if you don't have that spoon, like you can clearly see I don't, the light movement of the spoon will not damage the carbonation enough where it'll be like, I've just ruined my cocktail. <laughs> Great. Love it. Well, this has been lots of fun. Um, and I'm going to see if Book Larder wants to have anything, but I've, um, this has just been, it's so fun to see you again and get to talk <laughs> to you. Um, Love it. <laughs> and Book Larder, thank you so much. You know how much fun I had when I was in on Saturday. Um, it's such an amazing community bookstore like I'm so proud to have to be a part of that, that community now and um so thank you so much for for having us and of course and it was so wonderful to meet you the other day and it was really neat to hear your story um and for today's discussion it was just really fun and informative I actually <laughs> grabbed a you can't see it because of my weird oh, yeah. <laughs> and dry soda. Um, but what I really want is one of your cocktails, Jermaine. They look so beautiful oh, and delicious. Oh. I would just grab one through my screen, but I'll just, I guess Thank I'll just you. have to make one for myself now. Um, but you can everyone, totally do it. <laughs> yeah, for exactly. sure. Um, but for everyone who tuned in, thank you so much. If you want to delve more into the world of zero proof cocktails or learn how to make fun drinks with your dry sodas. Um, we do have, again, sorry, this, my screen is just not working, but we do have uh, signed copies of the book that you can order through our website. Um, <laughs> there we go, beautiful. Um, but really, thank you so much for such a fun discussion and, and cheers. Thank you, cheers. Thanks. Have a cheers, great Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy your rest of your week. You Thanks, too. Thanks, Jermaine. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you.